but you're doing a video right now. Yeah, I'm doing a video right now. And we're back. This is the before and after for Goku Roko Traces of Sin, and it's a Japanese movie that came out back in February 18, back in 2017 of this year. World premiere actually was 2016 for the Venice 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 Film Festival, and it's directed by K. Ishikawa. I haven't seen anything of his. This is actually his debut film because he did a 2017 short film called Ten. Haven't seen that. Doubt I'll watch it, but who knows. But anyways, the casting is what draw me to this movie. Satoshi Sumabuki is in this, uh, back in the orange days, and the ca casting of... And also oh, Yui Ishikawa, she's uh, from Japanese dramas days. Well, basically, it's an elite salaryman. His wife and his dead child are murdered, and it's a case that made the headlines, and it's unsolved, and then one year later, our main character begins to solve the case. So basically, it's just a mystery, and from the trailer, it looks pretty decent, and... Just checking out all the Japanese movies at 5th this year, so it's raining, it's windy, but I realized I might have not said anything about my actual expectation. So my expectation for Goku Ruko is that just the vibe of out of an unsolved case and then finding the case stuff and then the trailer looked convincing enough where it's just like people don't want to mess and he's just like, I want to find out what happened and solve this unsolved case. And I find that intriguing. I mean, granted, it's not a new storyline or anything that special, but like I said, uh, cast power for me here, just like seeing people that I've watched in going back to my drama roots of Japanese dramas, <laughs> J-dramas, it was just like I saw those people and it was just great seeing them and I want to see how they've grown. Some I've seen in movies since then, but it's always nice. So fifth. 2017 movie number two so yeah i'm gonna run it's raining it's gross and it's due to time constraints i'm filming here because yeah anyways that's it this is before and this is after so we're back now purple wallpaper it's a pretty good background but anyways traces of sin whoa as a first time debut director props 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 cast i only know the main lead um, side characters, not so much. On an acting sense, it was great. I mean, we, you really... The pacing, the narrative, and the blocking of each scene was done really well, where it just really engrossed you as you wanted to know more about these victims that were perfect. And then the twist happens. Granted, there was a great scene where she talks about how she killed them all and that was really morbid I just wondered if they were gonna flash to an actual like flashback of it or nope she just straight up talked about it and that had a huge punch to it I think I haven't seen something lately with that sense of just jarringly like in your face vivid imagery where you as an audience sort of figure out what happened and the way she talked and everything anyways so there is like a twist and I think audience would be divided in terms of the twist I mean granted it is a betrayal of trust and I think this works and doesn't work because it makes you wonder and question why the why and why and thank god I am not a very why type of guy because I don't really care about who's the father and why he did it and all that stuff but rather I think if you looked at this movie through the lens of what Japanese entertainment and culture has been portrayed and sort of stereotypicalized is that a word? I don't know but really this movie really has some hard hitting punches as in it portrays the middle class as a very different sort of thing granted you can go like okay you this is a horrible thriller mystery whatever but a social commentary wise, it was a whoa, didn't see that coming. Because granted, not a lot of movies really talk about the negativeness or the bad stuff that happens in society. And I think there were a lot of characters where I just felt like, wow, I haven't seen this sort of like character growth or reveal where you're just like, holy crap, like they were supposed to be perfect and they were like really bad people. And there's like no silver lining as in, I want to you know 
want them to have a happy ending type of thing and there wasn't any of that here and the twist granted is just like kind of heavy-handed could have been taken care of more better in a sense granted i read that this is an adaptation of a novel so maybe the novel pulls it off a lot better here it just feels kind of rushed at the end where just like oh bam and then but then it's like a, a slow build-up of when you when things fall into place and you think as like okay this happened and this line of dialogue happened holy smokes like how is he gonna react and it just pushes the boundaries and i appreciate that and i actually enjoyed it for that sense rather than who's the killer like i don't really care who killed them like when i knew more about them i'm like sure if you're gonna tell me someone killed them i, I wouldn't really care and then how did they pull it off and all that stuff and so there's that there's the whole plot thing and i think a lot of people will have issues with but granted this guy's first directorial debut cinematography wise i really did enjoy it it was a lot of shots that weren't particularly common in japanese cinema that i've seen granted i haven't seen any recent movies from japan which i need to rectify and i am watching a lot more this year in fifth of 2017 i said 18 last time i can't believe that but i look forward to 2018 anyways but anyways, yeah, like, I enjoyed performance, enjoyed cinematography, pacing, I enjoyed, blocking, for once, like, I actually noticed the blocking of characters, and it was interesting. I don't normally say that in my reviews, nor it pops up to my head, but, yeah, like, here, if you see it as a social commentary, as a bigger whole, rather than, who did it? Who done it? Because that's not a whodunit film, if you go into it thinking who done it. You're not. You're gonna get disappointed, and I'm. I'm glad. I mean, I like when I when I finished this movie, I sort of had to digest what was happening and the twists and all that. What did it mean? Did it matter? Did I care? And granted, I didn't really care when I finished it. And granted, you could say like, well, those weren't compelling characters. But at the end of the day, for me, it was. It didn't really matter. Like, it's a year, and what's gonna happen next? We had more pressing issues with her child and then all of a sudden we learn more about their background and then you learn more and then all of a sudden who's the father and it's like okay but i don't really does it really matter who the father was i mean does it explain more things maybe but i think the whole scope of the movie where it addressed the whole middle class perfection if you watch japanese cinema and just like oh you know work hard and do well and like you know everyone will be happy but clearly a lot of people weren't happy in this movie but some people who were striving to be like ambitious and all that was great for them anyways anyways i'm talking way too long um props on director first debut and you know sumabaki satoshi i think that's his name i mean i already knew he was a great actor to begin with i'm <laughs> read, read reviews where it's just like whoa he's a contender i'm like contender for what i don't know or that someone to watch out for I me mean, like granted i was always watching out for him every time he's a movie so Granted, I haven't watched a lot of Japanese movies, so I will go home and fix that. Anyways, that's it. It was a pretty long before and after, but this is it for the before and after of Goku Ruko. Go Goku Roku. Traces of Sin. Later.